Today we're going to show you how to install the A1 edition of our brand new Hydro Series HG10 liquid cooling bracket for graphics cards. The A1 is designed to fit AMD Radeon R9 290 and 290X cards that utilize AMD's reference design. For this, you'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver, a precision Phillips head screwdriver, 91% high purity isopropyl alcohol, cotton swabs, and cotton balls. To start, we'll need to remove the stock cooler of our Radeon R9 290X, and this is arguably the most time-consuming part of the process. First, remove the two screws that hold the cooler to the I.O. bracket. Then, one by one, remove each of the screws on the back of the card. I recommend leaving the four screws securing the GPU tension plate for last. Once you've removed all of the screws, gently lift from the rear of the card to separate the cooler from the card itself. Note that there are thermal pads and thermal grease, so there will be resistance. The blower fan is also plugged into the card, so you'll need to disconnect it. Next, carefully remove the thermal pads from the components on the board. The green pads can be removed using your fingertips easily enough, but the gray pads will require more effort and care, so we'll save those for later. We'll remove the thermal grease from the GPU die itself. To do so, dampen a cotton ball using the isopropyl alcohol and gently wipe the grease off of the GPU. The grease will have a tendency to clump and fall off of the wayside. For more precise cleaning, use a cotton swab that's been dipped into the alcohol. Note that the GPU die and components around it can be fragile, so take your time. You may also want to use another swab dampened in alcohol to remove any residue on the VRAM dies. You can use a cotton ball to brush any clumps off of the card. Next, you'll need to remove the gray thermal pads. Do this using cotton swabs soaked in alcohol, and like before, take care not to damage the components on the PCB. Just take your time and gently scrub the thermal pads off of the VRMs. They will eventually clump up like the thermal residue from the memory and the paste from the GPU, so you can safely brush them off the card. You don't have to be perfect. The thermal material AMD uses is non-conductive, but you should try to clean as much off as possible. For the HG10 to operate, we'll need to reuse the blower fan included with the stock cooler. Using a precision Phillips head screwdriver, remove each of the screws in the stock cooler's housing. From there, Carefully separate the housing from the back plate. Flip the back plate over and unscrew the three screws that are holding the blower fan in place. Be sure to save those three screws as you'll need them for the HG10. Now it's time to look at the HG10 itself. The HG10 includes a back plate, blower fan shroud, and screw kit. On the bottom of the back plate are thermal pads designed to improve contact between the power circuitry and video memory and the HG10 back plate itself, and these are covered with protective tape. Mounting the blower fan can be a little bit tricky. Route the power lead through the rectangular gap. Using the three screws that originally secured the blower to the stock cooler, carefully mount each corner of the blower to the HG10 bracket. Next we'll install the blower shroud. Included with the HG10 are four flat Phillips head screws. Use these to secure each of the corners of the blower shroud to the HG10 back plate. You can see that the blower is now safe and secure inside the HG10. We're finally ready to install the HG10 to the Radeon. Remove the protective tape from each of the thermal pads on the underside of the bracket. Reconnect the blower fan to the header on the graphics card, then align the bracket to the card. One by one, use the included round-headed screws to secure the bracket to the card. The HG10A1 uses most of the original mounting holes in the card, excluding the three at the back of the card, the four around the GPU itself, and the hole closest to the card's DVI ports. Now we need to prepare the card to accept a Hydro Series CPU cooler. The HG10 includes two sets of four standoffs and four thumb screws to secure the water block to the GPU. For this, we're going to be using a Hydro Series H105 cooler. That necessitates using the longer set of standoffs. One by one, install the standoffs to each of the four corners surrounding the GPU, securing them by hand. Remove the protective cap from the cooler's water block and align it to the four standoffs. Note that these standoffs correspond to the LGA 1150, 1155, and 1156 mounting holes. Using the included thumb screws, secure opposite corners of the water block the same way you might reinstall the lug nuts on a tire. The HG10 is now installed and ready to be used. Remember that when you install your newly liquid cooled graphics card, you'll need to connect the header on the water block to the motherboard to ensure the pump receives power, to say nothing of installing the fans on the hydro cooler. At this point, you can install the card and mount the radio to the case the same way you would if you'd installed the cooler to a CPU. This is Dustin Scalavas with Corsair Labs. Thank you for watching.